E o kumenita, e ngā waka Māori puta noa te motu, o ku rangatira, o ku mātua, o ku whaea hoki. Mei ki rā, ngā hau e wha, tēnei rā te tuake ki te mihi atu, i roti te āhua tanga o tātātou noho i tēnei ahi ahi. Welcome along to the Ahu Whenua Trophy BNZ Māori Excellence in Sheep and Beef Awards Ceremony for 2017 and also, not forgetting, the announcement of the winner of the Ahu Whenua Young Māori Farmer of the Year. I'm Matai Smith and it's an honour again to be your host for this evening. Uh, the Ahu Whenua Trophy competition is now 84 years old. I think that deserves a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Which, which is a great age for a competition which goes from strength to strength each year. Age has never wearied this competition. It is my pleasure now to introduce you to the Hiamana, or the chairman of the management committee, Mr. Kingi Smiler. Kingi, I am sure, is known to most of you here tonight. He is acknowledged as an influential leader in the agribusiness sector and has done much to build the positive profile of Māori agribusiness that it is today. As Matai said, we're recognising excellence in sheep and beef farming. And this legacy of Tāapirana and Lord Bledisloe continues to radiate widely amongst our communities and provide us with great exemplars of inspiration, motivation, success, leadership, discipline, and if you looked at these guys on the farm, the pukumahi, share hard work, and we saw that in the field work today. I would now just like to touch on a few key themes that these three finalists have illustrated during this competition and have displayed in their field days, which over 600 people attended this year. Firstly, ownership structures. Two of our finalists are Māori Trusts, subject to Te Ture Whenua Act with large groups of shareholders. Both of them are active supporters of mana motuhake, and that's about controlling one's own destiny. A clear message to Minister Flavel of the importance of getting the proposed legislation passed before the next election. Equally important, and it would be great to see cross-party support, is that we need to have a much better resourced Māori land service. And once again, the three finalists are Oma Pere Rangi Hamama, Poketawa Station, and Pukepoto Farms Trust. Kia ora tātou. All right. Well done, Piggy. For the past 13 years, the BNZ has sponsored the Ahu Whenua Trophy competition. They are indeed loyal and long-term friends with a strong commitment to the Ahu Whenua Trophy competition, and indeed we are grateful for that. The Ahu Whenua Kaupapa is a movement that spans the motu to promote and share our many stories of success and celebrating our role as tangata whenua, kaitiaki, and show the positive power of our whakapapa and how we can come together to be strong in a commercial sense and also as whānau. As we all know, Māori are a power in Aotearoa agribusiness and the future of us while 
challenging is still very bright and exciting. We are not only moving up the agribusiness value chain, but we are taking that knowledge and skills into other growth industries, and it is without doubt that Māori is a pivotal part of the Aotearoa New Zealand economy. And it's a great honour for me to be here this evening as the Director General of MPI to join the celebrations that surround this very special Bledisloe Cup. As you, many of you know and as you've heard, Lord Bledisloe donated the Ahu Whenua Trophy along with the matching cup for rugby. While the All Blacks set the standards on the rugby field, you set the standards on our farms. It's a great achievement to become a finalist and it shows you are first class farmers. As we know, primary industries in Northlands are, Northland are a cornerstone of the economy. This sector is affected by climate, biosecurity and other factors often out of our control. MPI is focused at providing support at the farmer level to build strong, resilient, sustainable businesses that can overcome these challenges and leverage future opportunities. First of all, I've got to thank those tupuna of ours who had the foresight to amalgamate these lands and put them into, into this trust because, and I say that, that when we look around its boundaries, every farm around that boundary that used to own, be owned by Māori are now owned by Pākehā or some other people. So I want to thank those tupuna who had the foresight to do that and those our uh, shareholders who are here tonight I want to thank you very, very much for your confidence in uh, putting the trust in our hands. The competition first started in 1933. It was held in Wairiki. Wairiki. Um, and it was won by William Swinton from Kokore. Wairiki. Uh, in 1936, it was won by Henry Jews from Tiki Tiki, and I'm told that it was put into the, uh, uh, the Waiapu farmer's store, but it was burnt down and the trophy was lost. 1938, four years, uh, two years after, it was replaced. 1942, uh, four years after, um, uh, apparently it was lost on a, on a rail trip from Rotorua to Wellington, sorry about it. Um, it got lost somewhere or other, and then in 1946, Rangi and Tainui Waka, it turned up at the Frankton Railway Station <laughs> under somebody's uh, baggage. I want to briefly note that these finalists embody the kind of initiative uh, that will be encouraged and rewarded by the government's Te Ture Whenua Māori reforms. Um, that's my view. Uh, these reforms are about returning decision-making to Māori landowners that have previously been held by uh, courts. Uh, so it's um, my real hope and desire that through greater exercise of mana motuhake and tino rangatiratanga that landowners will be better able uh, to meet their aspirations for their land, whatever they wish to do with it. Māori land will not be compromised by the new Te Teure Whenua Māori Bill. Um, and so to uh, the, um, the whānau that I have to give their, their medal to, to Ronald and to, uh, uh, to Buzz King, to Justine, congratulations. Uh, Kanuita Mihi, just one small problem. Bro, you went to Te Aute. Uh, but other than that, you're all right. Other than, than that, you're all right. So, uh, e Ewama, uh, please put your hands together uh, for uh, Ron and Justine King. I'd like to thank our whānau and our friends. I say our friends, but once you become our friends, you become our whānau. I'd like to thank you for being here and supporting us. Without your aroha and all your help, we wouldn't be here tonight. So we are immensely appreciative of what you've done to help us get here. Firstly, what an honour standing here tonight and being a part of the Ahu Whenua Trophy. I would like to thank my father, Ron Falconer, from Ronald and myself. Thank you for being uh, the man that you are with our Fano, and thank you for everything that you've done for Pukitawa in the last three years. We'd like to acknowledge our kids. Um, our kids are the future generation. Ronald and I take bright, great pride in making sure that they know it, and we try very hard to steer them in a good direction 
and make sure they grow up with respect. We did some research at Beef and Lamb New Zealand and uh, looking at what was it that, in terms of behaviour change of farmers, and what set apart our leading farmers in terms of farm performance. And yet, some of you may have heard me talk about this before, but it, it, if I sort of break it down into a nutshell, there are three types of farmers. There are those farmers that look at their boots, those farmers that look over the fence, and those farmers that look at the horizon. The thing is that is really special about Ahu Whenua is it's about celebrating the farmers that look at the horizon. And the thing that I love about Māori farming is they are very good at looking at the horizon. If you think back to your DNA and Kupe who was on the, you know, across the oceans, looked at the horizon and he had a vision of another land and sailed to Aotearoa. And that is, that is absolutely amazing when, I think, when we think about the technology we have today and we still have to have some confidence to travel the other side of the world. Someone who, who navigated by the stars and had that vision, he was a someone who really looked at the horizon. And what Ahu Whenua is, is about celebrating that DNA because the contestants, and particularly the finalists that we have here tonight, are people that look at the horizon. They see a greater future and they apply themselves, apply discipline, and, and drive uh, their collective resources and their whanau to actually achieve, and their hapu and their iwi to achieve greater things. So put your hands together for Loma Shira. Toi tu te kupu, toi tu te mana, toi tu te whenua. This whakatauki was spoken by Tenido of Whanganui. It is a plea to hold fast to our culture. For without language, without authority, and without land, the essence of being Māori would no longer exist. All that would remain would be a skeleton which would not give justice to the full body of Māori tanga. It is this essence of being Māori that brings us together. We are all here as winners with our names now connected through history to this prestigious competition. Time now to delve into our next part of the evening where we recognise and showcase the achievements and potential of some of our young Māori farmers. Young people who have demonstrated that they have the skills and indeed the determination to make a career in agriculture. The Young Māori Farmer of the Year Award is designed to ensure that Māori have future leaders in all aspects of agribusiness and especially on farms. Kapai, I'd now like to invite Michelle Hippolyte, John Rutherford and Tyree Connor to present a tonga to each of the finalists. Uh, our first finalist, Homaira Te Paki Paki, He Moata Kōpū Ngāpuhi Matawaya. Ngāti Pāho Wera, Jordan Biddle. E tiwi, Dylan Ruki Fowler, Te Ati Haunui Apaparangi. It's wonderful to celebrate and acknowledge Māori success. And I think, you know, we can all be very proud of the finalists for Ahu Whenua this evening because their success is our collective success as Te Ao Māori. And in particular, I want to acknowledge our three finalists, Jordan, Dylan and Himawata, uh, for the Young Māori Farmer Award and competition. And I think we've all got to do our bit, including these three fine young Māori on stage this evening, to inspire many more of our whānau, our tamariki, who are in school at the moment, to pursue other opportunities outside of the tertiary pathway. And so they're a prime example of what can be achieved, so I would like to congratulate all three of them this evening. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Ahu Whenua Young Māori Farmer Competition for 2017 is Jordan Biddle. This competition has given me a lot of confidence in what, am I, what I am doing. The opportunity for being a part of Ahu Whenua has been awesome. Cruising around looking at the different farms of the North Island 
has given me a whole nother taste of what farming has to offer. What I have seen on my way around these different blocks have really inspired me to push my future further. Please put your hands together and welcome the Right Honourable Bill English, the Prime Minister of New Zealand. I can also acknowledge uh, my colleague Tururua Flavel, Minister of Māori Affairs. Uh, there's a great clip of him uh, in Parliament yesterday pointing out to the Parliament that there's just two Māori Party MPs and they secured two billion in the budget. And then he says, what about all you other fellas? How much did you get? <laughs> and of course the answer was zero because none of them are in government <laughs> in the last nine years. So Te Urua, thank you for the part that you have played in changing the way New Zealand governments work with Māori. I uh, can also acknowledge the role that Ahu Whenua Awards have played in bringing about the Tatura Whenua uh, Act changes. But now that so many Māori and the broader community can see the economic gains and the positive forward progress of so many Māori land owners as represented here tonight, and, and I want to acknowledge uh, Te Urua's firm direction about it, but also all of those who have helped make that piece of legislation better. Uh, last week I was in Japan at the largest sheep farm in Japan, in Hokkaido. Uh, it's not like your New Zealand setup. I got out of the car and walked down the farm lane uh, to a pen where they were feeding Paul Dorset lambs with bottles on red carpet. So I got the treatment. Uh, but it highlighted for me how good we are at pastoral farming and grass-raised stock. Because in Hokkaido, uh, in Japan, they are running grassland schools, which are getting the Japanese farmers in and teaching them New Zealand grass farming. And I was so proud of the people uh, who were there. And the effect it's having is that those Japanese farmers are starting to believe they might be able to compete, and that's what's helping us get some of the political support for our free trade agreement. So it's great to be here to celebrate the excellence here that is based on the knowledge that's changing farming around the world. 
And now the moment we've all been waiting for, the announcement of the winner, Prime Minister. Kayakwe. The winner is Omapere Rangihamama Trust. Ladies and gentlemen, be upstanding as we congratulate the Ahu Whenua Trophy winners for 2017. Mo te tai tokerau o Mapere Rangiha Mama Trust. Nga pito fakarei o nga waka putano i te motu te na ko to kato. Te na ko to kato i mai nei ki te tau toko i te nei po ki oto o nga puhi nui tonu. E tuku na tuana nga nga fakatai tai ki a ko to e nga hoa fakatai tai te na ko to. Te na ko to e te premier ko to ko nga mini te kato a wini tana ko to Andrew. I had a corner to Nako, got I may need Koto, Kidoto, Yamato, Teni, Ayahi. I know got a man new, got Tae, Mato, Kite, Tupeho, or Tene, Momo Fakatai, Noreda, Tena, Koto, Tena, Koto, Tena, Tato Kato. Nathan Guy said in his clip to us tonight that the Māori, the Māori uh, economy contributed $43 billion to the economy, New Zealand economy. I worked out your $2 million, that's about 5% we got back. <laughs> <coughs> so uh, thank you, Teodoro, you got 5% back of what we spent on this country. I I'm just blown away, I mean our team is blown away and we want to thank you very, very much to our mayor of this town and to Tania. Tania, did you make it up here or are you yes, sitting down? Fine. Oh yeah, Tania's here, she's the deputy mayor of the Far North, Far North District Council. They were right behind us at this, and to Will and his boys, uh, and to the, to the family, uh, I want to thank you very much for the stiff competition that you put up. And just to say to everybody here tonight, thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts. Kia ora mai tato. Uh, Once the announcement was made, well, you could hear our, our supporters were just elated with the, the win. However, the biggest thing we took out of it was the learnings that we learned uh, in terms of we thought that our farm, we had our farm well tuned, but uh, during this exercise there were some blanks, there were some, some, um, some hollows in our plans and all that, and we learned a lot about that. And we learned more around the benchmarking across the country and that we, you know, there's a lot of work, we still got a lot of work to do to bring it up to standard. It's huge, like we got three and a half thousand uh, shareholders and they're, we've got 120 of them here tonight and they're just blown away. I, you know, I mean, they've seen us struggle through this, they've seen us taken to court over different issues and all that stuff, but we'll come through all that and, and I think tonight we'll just show how well uh, we've, we've done. I think at the beginning, you know, I thought I was a bit sceptical about it, but once we once we started to kick into it, and then especially when we got into the finals, well, we totally committed to the to the process, and it is you know it's the learnings that come out of it, the people you meet, you know, like you guys, and the people we meet. That that is the bonus. So the, the main thing about tonight is about celebrating Māori success, in particular in the agricultural sector. It's it's it's, it's the number one premier event for Māori in the sector. But the farming sector is a bit of a sleeping giant. 
that's why I, I spoke very much uh, tonight about the Ture Whenua reforms, which are about making the land far more productive. There's about 6% of Māori land still left in, in Māori hands in this country, and we're all about trying to make it productive and putting it into good use, uh, but, and ultimately allowing our people to have a say about, the, about their land in a way that's right for them and not by courts and anybody else. The succession planning is absolutely critical to, the, to this sector and to the future. While we only celebrate three each time we come around, there are others that put in their bids to, be, to become the young uh, Māori farmer of the year. And I'm sure once they achieve these rewards and actually come and see what it's all about, they will stay in the sector and, and look to, to, to actually ultimately one day lift that Ahu Whenua trophy for themselves. So it's a great showcase, it's an opportunity for young people to have to, to have a say, rub shoulders with others in the sector and indeed be seen in front of the whole community. I mean, you've got across the board a mixture of, of trusts, of ministries, of ministers, of those in the sector across the board. You've got um, people here from the top of the north to the bottom of the South Island who've come together um, in the, in the uh, whole objective of celebrating Māori successes in the agricultural sector. It's a wonderful occasion. It should be, actually, the organisers should be commended for a wonderful job that they do in celebrating success in the sector. Uh, it's great to see so many people celebrating the excellence of businesses they own and run which are competitive on the global stage. Uh, note there's, uh, th this is all about what people are able to achieve with their own capital, their own skills, uh, their own profit, their own excellence. You know, 15, 20 years ago, uh, no one would have really known much about the Māori farming sector. Because of the profile of these awards, you've got huge interest from the professional firms, from the media, and it works in a, fantastically well in projecting such a positive outlook for Māori business. I think the understanding among Māori that the business is the way ahead, enterprise, investment, uh, running your own ship, that's how you're going to get ahead. Waiting around for the government to fix the problem just isn't going to work. I think that it's important in a country to really encourage and foster the bits of it that are really starting to move. And uh, one of the great things here is that it's uh, the, the Ahu Whenua Awards have developed a very positive environment that have allowed the development of the Tatura Whenua Amendment legislation, which is the biggest change in Māori land ownership rules for a couple of generations. Uh, but people can now see what can be achieved. And that is going to be a significant driver of economic growth uh, for New Zealand, and particularly for some of our regions over the next 15, 20 years. Look, I think it's just fantastic to be part of it. And, and to see tonight the, um, the enthusiasm and the sheer joy for the winners, Omapuri, uh, just out of Kaikohe, uh, that's you know a part of the country where there's some real challenges. And this is like, as one of them said to me, it's like a beacon in our community. And I just think that's fantastic.